As we enter the full decade of Skyrim's existence, Bethesda Game Studios graced us with another update for this undying game, including fair amount of content that I'm sure plenty are excited to experience. And as there is no denying that Skyrim as a game is still thriving thanks to its open source flexibility and modding community efforts, I figured it's a perfect opportunity to create another visual overhaul, showcasing incredible possibilities that the collaboration between BGS and the modding community can provide. This visual overhaul will be focusing primarily on graphical improvements and enhancements mainly for Anniversary Edition, but will flawlessly work with all previous versions of Skyrim Special Edition. My goal with this overhaul is to provide a vanilla plus feel for the game by picking out textures, flora and lighting mods that do not deviate too far from the original game, leaving weather and ENB series as a choice to the users themselves, but since I personally like my Skyrim colorful and fantasy-like, the color tones contrast and bloom will reflect that preference throughout this video. Additionally, this visual overhaul attempts to include improvements for all aspects of the game, ranging from landscapes, clutter, cities, flora and fauna, and all the way to the method that the light is being scattered around the world space and ENB presets that are Luria Vista. Almost all of the graphical mods picked out by this overhaul range from performance friendly to quite taxing for your hardware, allowing users to adjust according to their system specs. This particular visual overhaul will be my secondary mod list available publicly for everyone to replicate at their own leisure. With that being said, strap on, relax, and let's turn Skyrim Anniversary Edition into a game comparable to current generation titles. Today's video is sponsored by Arcage, an MMORPG created by XL Games, originally released back in 2013 and goes as one of the most popular games in the genre to date. Now yes, Arcage is a veteran title in the genre itself, however, the game is about to enter a new chapter in its lifespan, as Kakao Games will take over the publishing duties for Arcage and Arcage Unchained. Arcage is one of those titles that many players look back to with nostalgia as positive, recollective and reminiscent times, myself included, as this game happens to be the MMO of choice during our teenage years. With Kakao Games taking publishing rights over Arcage, players are now able to start transferring their accounts and everyone finalizing their transfer receiving Brilliant Hiram Guardian Set as a reward. New servers are open from 3rd of December for both Arcage and Arcage Unchained, and with the link in the description, dive back into the world of Eranor and potentially relive the nostalgic experiences once again. Big thanks to Arcage for sponsoring this video. The main purpose of this video is to provide a showcase and visual representation for graphical improvements for Skyrim Anniversary Edition, and not to be a guide, as this is not a direction that I personally like to take, however, as what graphical mods I use is a frequently asked question, I figured a release of Anniversary Edition is a perfect opportunity to present a portion of it in video format. As far as the overhaul itself, it aims to change both outdoor and interior areas in a drastic but vanilla plus way, before applying weather and ENB series of your choice. Additionally, if interested in fully replicating the change, then the game will be colorful, dramatic, and to an extent almost unrecognizable in some areas. We will change almost everything and leave no stones unturned to keep the consistency at the highest level. Lastly, the main focus is visual and graphical change, which means little to almost no landscape changes, preserving maximum compatibility with anything you want to use alongside. The base of our visual change has to start with landscapes and all grassless terrain in the world space, as one of the main factors that holds back the visual fidelity of the game are pixelated and awkwardly stretched textures that were scattered by the developers back in 2011 in an attempt to preserve resources. As we are no longer limited by that factor, the choices provided by the community for improving this element are plentiful, however I figured the best possible choice would be an all-in-one package that aims to pretty much overhaul everything that you could possibly imagine. Skyland AIO would be the first mod that we will utilize in this overhaul, a single all-in-one package that improves almost all landscapes in the game by providing them with a high-quality texture suitable for the location and its color palette. 
The mod was created from 3D scans of real-world surfaces and arguably offers one of the most realistic visual overhauls for Skyrim. Additionally, Skyland stretches its visual change to architecture such as forts, caves and mines, cities and settlements, all the way to roads, riverbeds, shores, and even stars and galaxy. As landscapes of Skyrim are heavily saturated with mountains as its vistas, overhauling these rocky goliaths becomes equally as important as regular landscapes, and although Skyland does visually change them, we will be overriding it with the well-known Majestic Mountains. Majestic Mountains as a complete mountain rework mod changes the way mountain textures are presented, with adjusted data to create a better looking and geologic look, avoiding stack stone visuals that is prevalent in the original game. Additionally, the mod further expands its utility by reworking the way light is scattered to fit much better with the dynamic day and night cycles and weather systems of Skyrim as a province. Majestic Mountains and Skyland together cover quite large portion of the province, improving its visuals with higher resolution textures, but also introducing more variety throughout the landscape, as well as better consistency. Majestic Mountains offers three different variants, each having their own coloring, but for this visual overhaul, I personally found that the fourth option provided by another author, Northside, goes along the best with Skyland landscapes, due to its matching colors and contrast. With the landscapes being completely overhauled, we will move on to another visual element that does not necessarily seem important on the surface, but plays a huge role in visually enhancing the game the more it is improved, from both retexturing aspect to completely changing the 3D shapes. I personally spend more time than I'm willing to admit on improving and overhauling all clutter in the game, making sure that nothing remains unchanged, as these objects are distributed pretty much everywhere in the game, for both interior and outdoor areas. Static Mesh Improvement or SMIM as a massive project that greatly improves appearance of countless 3D models in Skyrim is a perfect all-in-one solution for most users as it attempts and succeeds in remaking and improving the Skyrim's architecture, clutter, furniture and much more. Delving deep into the depths of Skyrim's underground areas where most of the player explorations take place, additionally improving dungeon, ruin and cave 3D models and their textures also becomes one of our priorities. Ruins clutter improved alongside SMIM changes common clutter found in catacombs and ruins by adding more details and besides being a retexturing project, additionally changes the shape for most objects such as pots, doors, pillars and many other in-game materials. Further improvements for clutter and other static 3D objects located in most of the Skyrim settlements will be adjusted by an ongoing mod known as High Poly Project and is probably one of my favorite 3D model overhauls due to its high polygon count and UV edits. We will additionally expand our visual improvements of various of 3D objects by introducing a mod simply called High Quality Food and Ingredients drastically improving them due to their low quality in the original game. And lastly, few more touches for worshippers or those looking to improve as many objects as possible, JS Shrines of the Divines, a mod of incredible model and texture quality for that true next-gen feel. Stunning statues of Skyrim, increasing model quality for all statues in the game, as well as their textures as a self-explanatory and a last addition for clutter improvement, drastically changing the game for the better with almost no performance impact. Even though Skyland covers major cities of the province, I still personally prefer some alternative options for three of them, as they provide higher quality visuals and perfectly fit the aesthetic that I personally like when combining it with fantasy-oriented ENBs. Even though they are optional, I personally highly suggest these picks, as some of them utilize Parallax Shader, introducing 3D depth to some textures and provide a more distinct appearance for each city for more visual variety. We will start by overhauling Riften using Whiskit's Riften and Ratway, a previously covered texture overhaul that utilizes that same parallax shader and provides Riften with semi-colorful but appropriate and realistic appearance, suitable for the medieval poor town with close attention given to color consistency and contrast. Next to that, we will improve the dock area by introducing 3D docks and boardwalks, 
that provides this area with incredible high polygon quality for all meshes and ultra-sharp texturing, utilizing darker colors for planks and pillars. I'm sorry to drag you into Markov problems, but after that attack in the market, I'm running out of time. You're an outsider. You're dangerous looking. You'll do. The Warrens isn't a place for your type. What do you want? I know everyone who sleeps in the Warrens. Kind of the one who passes the keys around. No, don't get all upset. Here, take it. You've been digging around where you don't belong. It's time you learned a lesson. <clears throat> I was sent by Nepos the Nose. The old man hands out the orders. He told me to make sure you didn't get in the way. That's all I know, I swear. Excuse me. What's your business here? It's okay, my dear. Send her. Ah, yes. You've proven to be a real bloodhound. Well, you've sniffed me out. My dear girl, what makes you think you're getting out of here alive? You had to just go and cause trouble. Now we have to pin all these recent murders on you. It's a life sentence that's in the mind for you. Tell my friend, those guards sold you out but good. My advice? Serve your time at the pickaxe and get out. You don't want to end up getting a shiv in the guts over a bottle of skooma. No one talks to Madinak, I'm afraid. Not without getting past Borkel the Beast. And you don't want to talk to Borkel the Beast. The new meat. So soft. Tender. You want to talk to the king in rags? Fine. But first you gotta pay the toll. How about you get me a shiv? Ah, you want protection? I can get you what you need. Ready to pay the toll? One shiv. Alright, head on in. But don't try anything in there. Madanak is smarter than you think. So, my fellow beast, what do you want? Answers about the Forsworn? Revenge for trying to have you killed? I had a daughter once. She'd be 23 this year. She pleaded to the Jarl to take her instead. And after they made me watch as her head rolled off the block, they threw me in here anyway to dig up their silver. But you haven't earned your place out of here yet. Have you met Grisbar the Unlucky? Take care of him. And then we can leave Sidna Mine for good. Ah, Borkel muscle one out of you on your way in? Fine. Take this one. As far as the Solitude is concerned, we will take advantage of the mod that was relatively recently released and in my personal opinion provides Capital of Skyrim with one of the best visuals and textures and that's MRF Solitude. This overhaul focuses on providing the city with architectural diversity and luxurious interiors with replaced decals and utilizing clockwork meshes. These textures are quite colorful and thus making the city picturesque and some ENBs can oversaturate them resulting in overly bright colors for some. But as mentioned, as I like my Skyrim Radiant and Fantasy-like, MRF Solitude is a perfect fit. Victoria, no! Additionally, the mod also utilizes Parallax Shader for increased visual fidelity and its interiors are my favorite part of this city overhaul. Shops and inns utilize dark wood colors and stone walls as two contrasts that fit perfectly together, which darkens the interior for a more atmospheric look. Another small change that I like adding that I purposely left out during our landscaping will be Skyrim 3D rocks. These photogrammetry rocks are highly detailed meshes and their corresponding textures, replacing all Skyrim's small and medium-sized rocks and rock piles with incredible looking but highly optimized models. Going back into the interior cells of residential buildings, besides previously mentioned shops and inns, MRF Solitude also overhauls interior cells such as Bard's College and Blue Palace, with reddish tones resulting in luxurious and extravagant look. In our endeavor to fortify that style, we will also add 3D Furniture, a mod that greatly improves the look for almost all furniture objects as well as a basic dining set, both tiny details but significant when compiled together with rest of the mods. 
And lastly, for smaller settlements unrelated to major cities, the two changes that I've decided to include would be Rantau's water wheel, as well as the Skyrim's 3D windmill, for higher polygon count and better textures, as they are frequently used as objects in all villages of Skyrim. Flora is one of the most limited aspects in the game due to its resource-heavy nature, and as a decade-old game looking to preserve resources back in 2011, grass usage throughout all of the biomes is scarce, while trees all share the same model. Once again, as we are no longer limited by these factors, we will drastically change all biomes by introducing Wadosprom and Northern Grass combo, and have these two grass mods cover our landscapes with beautiful and lush green and yellow blanket depending on the biome, turning them into magical and fantasy-looking planes. Next, we will add 3D landscapes, a flora expansion and an ongoing effort to add variety to Skyrim's vegetation, by introducing trees, plants, water plants and weeds, utilizing more than 90 custom-made vegetation models. Further, we will overhaul existing tree models by introducing recently completed and released Happy Little Trees, a mod that aims to provide good visuals while having very low performance cost. These tree models are great looking, do not heavily deviate from the original game, while being very performance friendly, with snow trees being my favorite tree models ever released by the community, and additionally offers great looking lots and billboards for unloaded terrain, improving its consistency. Greybeards will never teach you. You may not be Dova, but the defeat of Alduin earns you the right of title. Not this time, Dragon Lord. This one's mine. Soon they will finish building my temple. Then this will be over soon for you. Weathers in the way light scatters across the world space are one of the most noticeable visual aspects when changing your game, and this part is heavily dependent on a personal preference, as some of them decide in which color direction both outdoor and interior areas will head towards. The collection of weather mods with NLA Weathers plugin for ENB being the main driver for all weathers of Skyrim utilized by this overhaul, provides the game with colorful and summer-like clear skies, while on the other hand, gloomy and sinister tones during rains, thunderstorms and cloudy days, achieving the best of both worlds. From dozens of hours of testing, NLA seems to have favored cloudy and rainy weathers over clear skies, which does seem appropriate for Skyrim as a northern province. As far as the lighting is concerned, we will utilize Lux Orbis as an exterior lighting overhaul, a complete rework designed to be compatible with ENB features, replacing all vanilla lighting with Lux's templates, with adjusted radiuses, fade values and placements carefully set by hand, with a plethora of tweaks for consistent and more dramatic lighting. Similarly, interior cells will be changed using Lux, arguably the most dramatic and impressive looking interior lighting overhaul 
that takes advantage of the latest developments in ENB with its main goal to offer realistic but dramatic presentation. On top of Lux, we have to add ENB Light, a mod that adds forced ENB Light to pretty much every object and actions that should technically emit light and cast shadows. We will also include Embers XD, the most consistent fire source overhaul. Paying attention to small light sources will be done utilizing medieval candles and SD's horn candles as two incredibly high quality mods that replace the 3D models of these lighting source objects. And lastly, we will include a series of small mods that together add even more light casting sources utilizing complex particle lights provided by an ENP, where even the simplest objects like alchemy tables, soul gems, Diedrich weapons or even Draugr eyes will cast a shadowed illumination source, increasing the game's dramatic presentation, and in tandem with the previously mentioned lighting mods, perfectly rounds up a circle of a lighting overhaul. It's time for our efforts to provide the last touches to the game in an endeavor to finalize the overhaul by changing all bodies of water in the province. And although I have showcased multiple of water overhauls on my channel in the past, I still stand strongly that the most visually pleasing option ever created by the community taking advantage of ENB's serious features would be water for ENB, especially with the Shades of Skyrim update. This water overhaul provides a fully fledged displacement support and visually an orally distinct coloring for different bodies of water with tranquil and semi-realistic transparency. ENB will play a big role in coloring for all bodies of water and again as a fan of fantasy visual look, as my good friend Heavy Burns would say, Gatorade water it is, however completely editable by changing some ENB values. As far as the ENB preset is concerned, this time we will utilize FN ENB, a fantasy realism preset based on Suki's fantastic ENB for Legendary Edition that was additionally tweaked into being a preset of its own. This preset is one of the most screenshot worthy in the community, not holding back its usage of all effects provided by ENB series, and providing the game with a range between gloomy and sinister tones, all the way to colorful and fantasy-like sceneries, depending on the concurrent in-game weather. As far as interiors are concerned, this is where this preset shines, as it was tuned with Lux as a lighting mod in mind. FN ENB will further increase the dramatic presentation that Lux achieves, and together they create indoor sceneries that are on par with current generation titles. Lighting and shadow casting will be incredibly dramatic and aesthetic, with every light source, whether being casted from outdoor or indoor areas, being visibly enhanced by effects of this ENB, making areas a little bit brighter in heavily illuminated cells, but darker in those that lack light sources, all resulting in semi-realistic but fantasy-style appearance, and quickly became my favorite preset to date that I'll be personally using for the foreseeable future. This graphical overhaul touches other aspects of the game that I found too dull to showcase, such as fully implemented improvement covering every single NPC, as well as character changes for a more enhanced appearance. If you are interested in replicating this visual overhaul into your game, a full mod list links will be provided in my Discord server, that will include full list with all of the links necessary, a proper load order, and plugin setup for full stability. As this list will be my secondary mod list, it will be publicly available for everyone to use, however, all further updates and changes from today will be provided exclusively to Patreons and supporters of this channel. As mentioned, your weather and ENB choice are completely optional, and you can apply your own preference if you wish to give your game a different color palette and theme. The background footage showcases the difference that this particular element provides, using some more popular ENBs with different goals and themes. Additionally, I'm proud to announce, and this is not an exaggeration, that I have probably one of the most helpful communities I've ever been a part of, that have individually helped everyone with their troubleshooting and modding endeavors, so even though this video is not meant to be a fully fledged guide, the community members will do their share in creating documents and provide all necessary help. So feel free to join us by using the link provided in the description and the pinned comment, and feel free to interact with the community and ask for help if you need assistance in replicating this visual overhaul. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and thank you so much for giving me the privilege of doing this full time.
Take care.